uh, the NDC in charge of operations. Uh, Mustafa, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. I don't know if you managed to catch that uh, live press briefing by the police there, uh, but if you did not, or whether or not you did, uh, are you adding them with the police on how you're proceeding tomorrow? Well, I have not heard of what the police have said, but I do know <clears throat> that subsequent to our meeting with the police on the arrangements for uh, the route, uh, with respect to Greater Accra, which is the seat of government, obviously, they've, they've agreed with us on the route. We are going to use that route. The demonstration starts at 7 a.m. and terminate without recourse to any time but at the office of the Electoral Commission. I don't think that beyond that the police have any anything to do. Our DS is to ensure that they give us enough protection as long as we do not violate what the Order Act says. We do not violate the agreement we've had with the police with respect to peace and order. We are actually going to work like Tatis. We work slow so that Ghanaians who are even blind, Ghanaians who you know, are disability, but have a vote, can join that demonstration. If it takes us two days, if it takes us three days, we will work as slow as possible that will take us to the Electoral Commission peacefully. Once we are not in violation of that law, uh, I don't think that the police will be at variance or at, at uh, any issue with the police, loggerheads with the police. We, we, we also do know that our brothers from the MPP intended to let some people wear our you know, T-shirts to come and pretend as if they are part of demonstrators, cause trouble so that we'll get a bad name. We wouldn't wait for the police to deal with such, such acts. We ourselves would detail our, our security guys to deal with such threats the way it deserves, if it shows its head. Because the NDC and the people of Ghana intends to embark on a very peaceful demonstration. A peaceful demonstration that manifests our disgust and enforces the call for a cleanup or an audit of our voters' register. If anybody covertly arranges to come and perpetrate an illegality in that demonstration, we will deal with that person with any force that we can marshal at that level so that we do not take a bad name home. But we can assure the police that we'll be in full cooperation with their orders as long as they don't take they also the law into their own hands. Because we do know that some elements have been mixed up through the police. So even the police we have have been neutralized with invisible forces. If they decide to take the law into their own hands to abuse our people, we we'll have no choice than to defend ourselves. But as long as those lines are drawn, I don't think that tomorrow is an issue. So where's the starting point? We, we start at Kwame Nkrumah Circle, and then we go through National Theatre, and then we go through Parliament House, come back, and then to Electoral Commission. But of course, there's no time to it. So like I told you, we are going to try and address as many as about 100 mini rallies during this demonstration. And so it's going to really be a very slow-paced demonstration. Let the police themselves carry their own water and food. Because we are not going to finish early. We are going to take our time and walk as we can walk. Nobody is going to force anybody with speed to go and submit a letter and go home. We are with the demonstration until we get to the Electoral Commission headquarters. I think that that is what we agreed with the police. Who are the key persons joining you on the demonstration tomorrow? Is the former <coughs> president joining you? The people of Ghana who have the right to vote. Tomorrow's demonstration is not about President John Damani Mahama. It is not about the NDC. It's about the people of Ghana who do not trust the Electoral Commission. The people of Ghana who constituted the survey of the afro Barometer survey, who do not trust the Electoral Commission, the people of Ghana whose names have been illegally transferred, the people of Ghana who went for exhibition and their names were transferred to other constituencies where they are not from. Plus, the number of people who build their coups not necessary at this time. 
civil unrest is not necessary. The only way to vote a bad government out is through a voting process. Those people who are threatened that Jinmensa and Bosmanasari in particular will not give them the chance to manifest that right, that civil right, they will join us tomorrow. The people who believe that President Akufado's appointment of Amfu Kwachi's, uh, Mr. Kwachi's son to be a consultant of the IP, knowing very well his long-standing relationship with Mr. Kwachi from UK, and we'll talk, talk about the story behind it one day, from UK to go and make that person a consultant to the Electoral Commission. Those who do that, justice and fairness will not prevail as far as the electoral commission system remain an audit, will join us, including journalists like yourself, who believe that we are at, okay, we will destabilize this country if we don't get the referee for our national elections to exhibit professionalism, to exhibit transparency, to exhibit free and fair process that is understandable by every Ghanaian. It is not just NDC. Tomorrow, NPT can win an election and decide that because we have a commission that is unprofessional, they would argue that we have won. And if we can lose and say that we have won, because the left commission will have loopholes. You know, that is a danger we possess. If today, electoral commission BVD machines are being sold in the marketplace as mobile phones, then your guess will be as good as mine. If today, they lie to all of us, that a district officer in Pusiga is able to transfer data illegally at the headquarters, which is a very fact lie, dishonesty exhibited by commissioners of the electoral commission, then any other person can manipulate our election and choose a president of us. Here we are as a political party. We have vowed that as we stand today, unlike 2020 where President Akufodo allegedly uh, uh, you know, emerged as a winner of a fraudulent election. We will not have another fraudulent, you know, election that will produce a president in 2024. Nobody will be a president of Ghana to preside over all of us over a fraud election. That election must be won clean. That process must be transparent. That process must be in accordance with law. That is the only guarantee. It hides that. I think that Ghana is at crossroads. And the people who matter should all raise their voice. The pastors who are running away from the truth should speak at this time because they don't speak on behalf of the people of Ghana. The elders, the statesmen of our country, the fathers of this nation must speak. If we sit. Hello, Mustafa. We will not be... Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I, I lost you briefly there, but you're back on track. I'm saying that if we allow. Jin Mensa a bossman Asari to undermine the stability of this nation. We will not blame MPP, we will not blame NDC. We will blame the ones who ought to speak, but yet they kept quiet. Because we are seeing that these two people are leading us to a path of destruction. Because in as much as their systems are compromised, they are not even exhibiting professionality. They are not exhibiting neutrality. They are not exhuming themselves from political influence. At all intents and purposes, they are under a fraudulent intention to manipulate and commit electoral fraud. That is dangerous for this country. That is dangerous for the democracy of this country. Okay. That is dangerous for the peace and stability of this country. Very well. so, and NDC will not be blamed so, if we land ourselves in chaos. So at the Electoral Commission headquarters, I, I presume you have a petition to submit. Do you have anybody you have agreed to deliver this petition to or whoever picks it up would be okay for you? And what happens next? They, they can choose to run away. But if they do not listen to the demonstration, I think that at some point we have to narrow them into the risk they are exposing all of them, all of us to. Where we would have to make a supplementary demonstration to now head to their private bungalows to demonstrate at Jean Mensah's residence where her children and her husband and her family will now have to be exposed to the risk they are exposing the people of Ghana to. That is where we will get to at step two. Bosman Asari and his children and his family would now have to be exposed to the kind of risk they are exposing Ghanaians to because no lives to be lost because of corrupt commissioners of electoral commission.
Nobody's life should be lost M- because M- M- we M- have M- to do the right thing. Most of all, I would urge you to tone down on the allegation of corruption, which you have no evidence. No, of. no, I have evidence. I have evidence that that the commissioners have manipulated. They have manipulated our. Who is in charge of the electoral commission? You said the commissioners. Isn't seven commissioners. No, it's, yes. They, they, they Good. 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 You said they are, they are corrupt commissioners. And when you say corruption, corruption or what? The mind, the body, money. Which kind of corruption? Well, if you preside over a corrupt process, you are as well corrupt. Very well. The if current they, process we have. The current process we have is very corrupt because I'm telling you, it is not possible for a director in Pusiga to transfer data from the headquarters. It's impossibility, but yet they are lying. That is deceit. That is deception. Okay. That is a lie. Are you sure you can get the numbers in the regions too? In I mean, nationally, yes, we usually measure a demonstration the num- by numbers. The what, numbers what, what's your plan with the regions? Is that also coming as planned or you have... Uh, all, of, all of them, uh, the whole country, we are on demonstration. And the number doesn't matter. We know that well-meaning Ghanaians will join us. What is even more frustrating is the silence of the MPP. MPP that is going into an election to break the eight. We have a compromised provisional voters register, yet they have lost their voice in this country. You don't even think that they are in power. They are not speaking. Most of all, when they were in opposition, they were against this very register. They went on a demonstration, talked about letting their votes count. It resulted in violence. One person was injured. I think one person was reported. I don't remember the history immediately. At the time, you were comfortable with the register. The tables have turned now. You are uncomfortable with the register. They are pretty tight-lipped. Is that not the same thing? There are many we people who hold a view we'll- that... It's a cyclical problem that the two parties keep foisting on Ghanaians. Well, granted that equity protects the, the vigilant, that those in opposition will always call for tighter accountability and transparent processes. The people we should be calling to speak out today are the members of the National Peace Council who had a voice in 2016, but do not have a voice today because they are supposed to be the fathers of the land. Where are their voices? In 2016, the Peace Council joined the call for an audit. The register was audited. 2012, it was the same. What has happened? What facts have changed? What facts have changed? Is it because MPP is in power? So they've lost their voices? What has changed? That we are even today, we are even having more compelling, more revealing evidence that the register is compromised. We have demonstrated that they have illegally transferred people from places to other places without their consent. We have shown that they have deleted people's names without their consent. We have demonstrated all that. We have also shown that the recent arrest that was effected where somebody was selling DVD machines was arrested by NBC operatives. Okay, we have shown that evidence. We have also shown that the commission is incompetent to answer 35 questions, technical, you know, inventory questions that will lead to how the BVR machines got lost in their own custody. We have demonstrated that. We have demonstrated that the electoral commission is incompetent by using quora to project figures. We have demonstrated that. We have also demonstrated that MPP, you know, members, are being appointed onto the commission of the electoral commission. Apia J is one of them. Another lady who is a commissioner is one of them. Bosman Asari is a patron of the MPP. He is not neutral. Then the worst of it is Ampho Kwache, Mr. Kwache's son, who is now a consultant to the IT department. Haven't we shown enough reasons why we should be more worried? Haven't we shown enough compelling reasons why we should have a process that is credible and reliable for an election. Now, they tell you and I that a director in Pusiga have succeeded in transferring people illegally. The same way some fraudsters will sit somewhere and manipulate and interfere with our election system and choose a president for us if we don't audit the process. Because the people in place are incompetent. They are jokes. They are not serious to their job. Very well. We have shown that. Today, as we speak, the Electoral Commission has not been able to tell the people of Ghana how many people registered in the two limited registration exercises that we did. They have not been able to tell us. We have demanded for special voters register. They have not been able to produce that. We have you know, demanded for transfer lists. 
They haven't been able to produce that. What else should we do? Really? Why are the fathers of the nation quiet? Why is everyone that matters quiet? Do we have to go to war because of an election? Do we have to sit down for a small group of people to undermine the security, the stability, the development, the growth of this nation? Do we have to sit down? No. That is why the NDC is calling for an audit so that we can do away with all these new signs of conflict, yeah. new signs of confusion, new signs of chaos that is, is ahead of us in 2024. Thank you so much. We, for, for speaking Thank you to very us. much. Thank you. That's Mustafa Agbande. He's Deputy General Secretary of the NDC in charge of operations, speaking to us about uh, the plan for tomorrow's demonstration, nationwide demonstration by the NDC.